Hi, my name is Michael Trout. I'm an innovator. I'm the inventor of the Open Startup, a new paradigm for launching ideas. And I haven't done many talks recently because I've been really focused on a local startup, my own startup, um, called um, uh, Multi Night Ventures. But I'm not going to talk about Multi Night Ventures, except for it's an organic startup dealing centered around basically um, uh, beekeeping. Japanese bees and organic farming in the sense that the bees become the central part. So I'm developing the land, I'm developing, I'm doing a greenhouse, I'm doing a lot of stuff. So I haven't had time um, to do much. And to be honest, I've pivoted away from the open startup only because I realized that given my certain location in rural Japan, that access to capital really takes face-to-face -face meetings and not having the means to meet with investors the likelihood of me chasing this rabbit, you know, to success is extremely low. And the reason why, the biggest reason what I realize is that if I'm right with my assumptions, I change everything. I mean, I change everything, which means we eliminate the closed 1% access that provides the capital. We transform the corporation. Um, we, we move the selfish corporation to a selfless one. And, you know... Recently, I'm giving, I've given a name to this, which I call it social capitalism. Social capitalism is ultimately what I am describing. And ultimately, social capitalism does a number of things. And, and what it does is it removes the control of the 1% of the wealthy and ultimately puts that control in the hands of the 99%. So, to put it a different way, it basically um, takes away the power of what I call the lesser stakeholders and grants power to what I call the greater stakeholders. The greater stakeholders is humanity. The greater stakeholders are you and I who have a, a need and responsibility um, for, for our planet, right? Which we have basically handed over to a few, which are basically ruining so what is social capitalism? Well, social capitalism is this. is One is it removes, via the open startup, it removes the need of closed gatekeepers, foundations, individuals, anyone who makes a decision on, you know, on whether or not this project is going to get green-lighted or not is removed from the social capitalist framework. And ultimately, how it removes it is, number one, is it has what I call open corporations investing by their greater stakeholders into launching new open corporations. So imagine a platform. Let me kind of describe it to you. Imagine a platform where here's an idea. The idea won't launch unless it reaches a critical mass. So it's basically private. You can see the idea. The only people who have access to this idea, the greater, and anyone has access, greater stakeholders, lesser stakeholders have access, is if you put some funding into it. And the funding takes the form of Bitcoin, right? Not dollars, not anything else, because all these other currencies, ultimately, if you've done any research, are unstable right now. When you've got, you know, when you've got, you know, uh, 14 trillion uh, yen, uh, uh, yen, basically trillion yen, and we have got 16 trillion dollars out there, and every, every Fiscal financial market basically is is going to go down, right? It's going to, it, 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 you know, at some point um, the Ponzi is going to end. So the reason why I use Bitcoin is because of that. Bitcoin doesn't have that. It's kind of like gold. There's only a certain amount. You can only mine so much. It's going to go up in value. So imagine if every interaction, if you like something, if you did anything, ultimately you got rewarded with this little bit of Bitcoin, micro Bitcoin, right? This micro Bitcoin is ultimately through the engine is actually distributed and plant, plant, you know, passed back and forth based on on the social media um, by likes and by shares and so on. Um, you're actually gaining or giving. So when you like something, you're actually transforming micro Bitcoin to that project. So. It's no longer about, you know, a simple like is currency. A simple share is currency. A, sh a simple investment in Bitcoin is currency. So um, in social capitalism, basically, it's, it's, it's the many that makes the choice because you no longer need these small, specific gate um, gatekeepers 
to beg to and say, please fund Open Startups. Please fund this project so I can make it a reality. So the second thing is this, is that the types of corporations, the corporation we launch exactly the same, except for this. The way that the bylaws are described in the articles or incorporation basically state this, is that ultimately it still has a board, it has a trustee, except for they make recommendations for the greater stakeholders to approve. All right. So imagine if um, ultimately you say, hey, I want to appoint this CEO. Currently in the current market uh, structure, say I want to appoint the CEO and the CEO is appointed. Now imagine if the employees or even the greater stakeholders got to say yes or no in that appointment of a CEO. So um, ultimately as the founder, you can set up your open corporation any way you want so you could make it very hard for the greater stakeholders to approve it but they still get a chance to approve you may say it takes hundred percent of the approval of the um, you know or, or disapproval of the greater stakeholders for CO not to happen right um, you may say it just takes 25 percent so if you want to put the power kind of like in in you know in to a few you could actually set up your your uh, your open corp in certain ways. So it's flexible. So what I didn't want to do was say, okay, all corporations are going to be this. Ultimately, you'll be able to set it up. However, how you set it up is going to impact you, how people will participate and respond to you. So if you set up a corporation, kind of like how a corporation is set up today, I believe most people are going to say, you know what? I don't want to like this. I don't like this. I don't, you know. So by you simply not being open, transparent, and flexible, what you're going to do is ultimately hurt potential uh, individuals supporting you. If you are an open, saying, hey, we are collaborative, um, you know, we treat everyone the same, and we're fair, and we're equitable, then I believe more people are going to participate with in, in your ideas. So imagine in social capitalism, all of a sudden, you have corporations that are 100% fiscally transparent, that ultimately um, the lesser stakeholders run the things, however, the greater stakeholders approve and everything else. And all of that, on the end of the day, when you have profits, you share these profits with your uh, stakeholders, your lesser stakeholders and your, um, to an extent, your greater stakeholders, and they get to then turn around and go on the open, open, open startup platform and allocate where these profits go to that next great idea. And imagine that, you know, that none of these projects actually will launch as a crowdfunding campaign unless they meet basically 75% of their goal in a private. So, and we don't have limits. So right now, nine, over 95% of Kickstarter fails. So imagine, I want you to imagine, for example, uh, a crowdfunding campaign that you only see projects that have 75% of their goal. It's that simple, right? It's called passive crowdfunding. So passive crowdfunding takes place with these open startups until they reach a critical mass. Once they reach a critical mass, boom, they go out. And then it's like, listen, if you here's your chance. You like this. You you know, here's your chance to put to put in a small investment. And here's your chance to share. So the platform itself takes advantage of the uh, networks that are already out there, Twitter and everything else. Um, and has all these folks who put money in or liked it as a result of it, they get to, to launch it. The open startup paradigm is is radical because what will it do? What's the outcome? Imagine all of a sudden you have corporations that are no longer like Monsanto or you know General Electric or any of these large corporations that are closed that benefit a few stakeholders and that are ultimately selfish like Exxon and um, you know and um, uh, BP, all these corporations that basically are raping the earth, that are taking, 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 and not giving anything back, right? They're raping it for the sake of a few stakeholders. So now imagine all of a sudden that you have, um, uh, think of a Google, or right? a Google that ultimately launches literally thousands and thousands of corporations um, that either <coughs> are part of the corporation itself or rolls out as an independent um, subsidiary of it that is self-managed. You know, one of the greatest um, um, investors of all time, War, uh, Warren Buffett, basically buys corporations and he goes, you know what, run it. I don't want to change anything. You run it. So I want you to think of the open corporation as, as really um, 
as a, um, you know, as a network of, of organizations all working for the benefit of humanity with the greater stakeholder in mind that ultimately are launching through its membership is in its in its um, uh, participants more and more and more. What we have is extremely, extremely scalable. And like I said, you remove the one percent from the equation. That is the open startup paradigm. And my name is Michael Trout, and I spent two years inventing it. The problem I have is I need capital to launch this damn thing. So I'm not going to launch a crowdfunding campaign unless I, you know, I have at least a hundred, two hundred thousand in pledges. So if you'd like to pledge, if you're interested in this and making this happen, please contact me, Mike at mtrout.com, right? Or me at mtrout.com. Thanks a lot. Bye.